What if you could live minutes from Austin's tech hub with beautiful views off your back porch and have access to amenities? Well, stick around now. Join me as we tour Northwest Austin and the Great Hills community. Hi, I'm Nicole Cooper. My team and I get calls and emails from people just like you needing help moving in and around Austin, Texas, and we absolutely love it. So whether you're looking to move today, tomorrow, or somewhere in between, give us a call, shoot us a text, or send us an email because we're always available to help you find the perfect home that matches your lifestyle. Now, Northwest Austin, Great Hills Country Club is right smack in the middle of it. And it's kind of the perfect blend of suburban and urban. You're off back tucked into a neighborhood. So it's nice and quiet, beautiful rolling terrain. Yet you are right next to all things, shopping, restaurants, downtown, tech hub, you name it. I'm going to show you in the map right now. So where is this Great Hills we're talking about? We have it right up here in this Northwest little pocket of town only 20 minutes to downtown, no big deal. And just a little bit further, 23 minutes to the airport. So when you go to the airport, you get to skirt the whole town and come out here on this loop around on 183. There is a bit of a toll out here on this side, but not too bad. And it certainly makes for a quick route to get to and from the airport from Great Hills. All right. To give you some bearings here as we go through our video today, this is Mopac or Loop 1 here. This is 360 that circles out the west side of town. And then this is Highway 183 that goes all the way to up from Leander and down out to the airport. Now, of course, it goes further than that, but that's what's important for us today. And then you can see how Great Hills is right here at kind of the convergence of all of these big highways, easy access in any direction. I'm going to zoom in a little bit closer now so you can see what this land is like on this uh, topographical map here. All this rolling terrain out here, it's just gorgeous. And that really leads to a lot of those back porch views. And we'll see some of those as we go along today. But here is an aerial view of the, the kind of the golf course specifically as we zoom in here you can see how all these little kind of ravines and cliffs and things go throughout the community this light green of course is the golf course and the blue up here is right by the clubhouse and because those are the tennis and pickleball courts there but as we zoom in you can get, kind of get a feel of how much how many trees are out there and kind of how the homes are just built in the middle of it see this here these just beautiful home sites in among all the trees you're going to have a lot of deer roaming around out there coyotes squirrels all the little animals coming into your yard but it is not a barren like new construction community like you might see um up in suburbs part of town these homes were built mostly in the 70s and 80s and therefore the trees have been growing all that time and they just provide so much cover around the houses now don't get me wrong it uh, makes it uh, harder to play that golf course because you can't hit it in the trees there either but we'll go over more of that later so here is a perfect example of one of the homes with a back porch view this is about on par with the right pricing in the neighborhood. It's 1657 square feet, built in 92, listed for $875,000. Now this kind of shape of the house right here is pretty typical for the 90s. You will find some out there, but this is what you can expect to find in and around that Northwest Austin area big back porch views overlooking the green belt, overlooking the trees. And here are a couple more angles. You'll also find that some of these houses in the area don't have much by way of yard because they fall kind of off the cliffs and things. So depending on what you're looking for, um, if you're looking for that big sky view, you can find it. But if you're looking for that big backyard, sometimes you have to give up a little bit of the backyard for a view. There's plenty of homes with big flat backyards, but if you want the view, probably not at the same time. All right, since we know what a home and a big view looks like in the Great Hills area, let's zoom on into the golf course and amenities and check out what's going there. 
So here we are right in the center of this area here, the convergence of 183 and 360. And here it is from the air. So the white roof, that is the country club itself with the pro shop, um, the dining area, the fitness and everything in there. We've got our tennis courts over here. And just on the other side, just out of view is a swimming pool and a couple of other tennis courts. But back here on this back patio, they have an enormous outside area where you can sit out and overlook. They've got a big putting green back there. And then this is hole number one going up this way. And then you have hole seven coming in as a par three. You have hole eight going there. So you can see a whole lot of golf from the back porch while you're having your lunch or whatever. You can heckle a little bit out there, if you will. Um, but as far as the amenities go, they it, it, it is a great, great club. They've got a banquet center. They've got a teen center. They've got men's and women's lounges, dining facilities, boardroom. You can use that for meetings and things. Now of note, for Great Hills, they have elected to, they're, they're member owned, uh, member owned country club, and they have elected to do some repairs in the upcoming future. So I think towards the end of this year, towards the end of 2024, depending on permitting, of course, they plan to close down and redo the irrigation system and redo some of the golf course, do some improvements and some upgrades all around. So. If you're thinking about joining a club, know that this one's going to be closed pretty shortly and it might, I don't know, close for six months a year. We don't know. No one knows really. I'm sure they have a plan, but uh, with when it comes to construction, it's always a little bit longer than expected. But here's the tip. Right now, the initiation fee is only $50,000. I have a sneaky feeling that after they do these repairs and upgrades and things, when they come back online, when they're in a better position, they're going to be upping those initiation fees. So if you want to get in and get on the waiting list now at the $50,000 rate, I highly suggest it. So you'll be ready when it comes out and finished on the other end. And hey, you can still play tennis, pickleball, swim, and go to the dining while the course is under construction. All right, next we're going to focus on some of the parks in the area. There are more trails and parks that we'll, then we'll view today, but uh, I just want to highlight the main ones. So here's the Great Hills Country Club again, right here in the middle. And I didn't show you any pictures of the club itself, so I'll do that right quick before we move on. This is hole number 18, long par five going uphill there, so you can get an idea of how hilly the golf course is. Here's a picture of the dining room getting ready for a fancy event. There's the swimming pool. They have children's activities all throughout the year. And there's the front view from the pro shop there. And here's that cool back patio I was talking about. And this is another view of number 18. Of course, here you're looking from the green back towards the tee box. It is a booger of a hill if you're carrying your clubs on that 18th hole. <laughs> okay, back to the parks. Here is St. Edward's Green Belt. And of course, this was in the spring when the blue bonnets were out. And there's also water in the creek bed, so also probably taken in the spring. Um, our, most of our creek beds do run dry in the summer months because we don't get enough rain, but you're gonna find these limestone formations all throughout our hiking trails, all throughout downtown, and they'll have these um, crushed granite uh, or rock paths. So it's easy to follow the trail and get a good exercise. So we go from St. Edward's Greenbelt, kind of right here in the middle. We're going up a little bit further north to Mountain View Park. It's just a regular park to take the kids um, with the playground. You can have um, picnics there. It's got that covered pavilion, big room to run. And this is a very common sight that you will see in all of Northwest Austin with these deer hanging out. They are um, very common. If you have plants and flowers in your yard, they'll probably come in your yard and eat those as well. And we're coming from this top Mountain View Park here down to Bull Creek Park. And Bull Creek Park is another creek bed, as the name might suggest. And also this was during probably the spring or fall when there's more rain because during the summer, this baby is going to be much more dry with just little small pockets uh, in the deep parts that may keep water throughout the summer. We just don't get enough rain here in the summer, but when it is raining, that's how beautiful it is. So Great Hills has a very good location, easy to get to any of these three parks. Okay, next we're gonna talk about the schools. 
Interestingly enough, in this area, through the Great Hills community in Northwest Austin, it is kind of split in between. The northern half goes to the Round Rock ISD and the southern half goes to the Austin ISD. And in this particular instance, the schools on the Round Rock side do get a bit higher grades. Here, I'll show you. So here we are, this red peg here is the center of Great Hills. And then up here on this north side, we have Westwood High School. And then down here on the south portion, that's Anderson High School. And Anderson feeds into Austin ISD, Westwood feeds into Round Rock ISD. So per texasschools.gov, Westwood High School in the Round Rock ISD gets a 93 out of 100. Just under 3,000 student enrollment, and this is for the high school only. This is their diversity graph here in the middle, puts them about 16.2 students per teacher. Compare that with Anderson High School in the Austin ISD, and they get 90 out of 100. Um, 2230 students, here's your diversity graph, 17.6 students a teacher. Then we go. We can go on down to the middle schools as well. The in Austin ISD, the southern portion that feeds into Murkison Middle School. It's an 84 out of 100. 12, 13 student enrollment. Here's the diversity graph in the middle. 16.4 students per teacher. And then the middle school compared to the Round Rock portion, the northern portion, it's Canyon Vista, and they get a 97 out of 100. Total enrollment, 1290. Here's your diversity graph. And then they get 14.6 students per teacher. So I'll show you another map to look at here. This green line here is the bound or the border between the Austin ISD and the Round Rock ISD. So when you have homes on either side, the values will fluctuate a little bit based on which school district they feed into because the children are the side that has the kids feeding into the Round Rock ISD, a bit higher grades, so a bit more sought after. So the homes will be valued a bit more, all other things equal. On the south side of this line, they feed into Austin ISD. So all other things equal, those homes will be a little less valuable just based on the school district. But this green border here will give you the guidelines of where that split is between the two school districts. Okay, we're gonna move from the school systems to the shopping. At the top of this video, I told you it had an excellent location based on proximity to all things shopping and restaurants, and here's why. Have a look in the map over here. So here is our Great Hills Country Club right here in the middle, and just, just outside of it, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here for you, we have the Arboretum same side of the highway you don't even have to cross a major highway to get here the arboretum is an outside shopping mall it has pottery barn boutique stores it has restaurants it still has a barnes and noble yes a bookstore still exists um uh, of course you have um the pot the cheesecake factory i was like what is um yes you have the cheesecake factory and many many other stores just across from the Arboretum, this little shopping area over here, you're going to have Trader Joe's, which is a grocery store. You have TJ Maxx, which is a, a discount clothing store. And you have all kinds of little boutiques in between. You hop over the major highway here, and that puts you even to more discount stores. And then you have Costco right across the way, which is a big warehouse store. Then, and don't forget, there are many, many restaurants in this area because it's so uh, it's got so much commercial in there. But let's look also how close it is to the domain. This little um, blue line here is to the domain shopping center, four miles, under four miles, really. And the domain is another outdoor mall. It is much, much bigger than the Arboretum. It's probably our biggest mall in anywhere in Austin and the surrounding area. Um, short of the outlet malls, of course, those are quite large. Um, but this one is going to be our luxury mall. It's gonna have all of the higher end shopping that some of the other malls don't have in town. Think Rolex, Hermes, Prada, things like that. You'll find this up here at the domain. And it's just sprinkled with restaurants, coffee shops, and clothing stores, shoe stores, things like that. You've got your big department stores like Macy's and Nordstrom's there. 
And then if you hop over here onto this Rock Rose Avenue, that's more like a going out scene where you're gonna literally have restaurants and bars right next to each other. From Hat Creek, you've got Lavaca Street Grill, Houndstooth Coffee, Dogwood, which is another pub. And those turn into more restaurants as you go north. With Velvet Taco, you've got another bar, Wonder Bar, Bakery, you've got Culinary Dropout up here. So the domain has just limitless shopping. It's also scattered throughout with apartments and condos and commercial in retail, or not retail space, commercial office space. So you'll find a lot of businesses up there like Indeed, Meta, VRBO, and Amazon all in the domain. And speaking of those uh, commercial companies like your IBMs, Meta, VRBO, and Indeed, I just want to show you what we refer as to the tech corridor here in North Austin. Basically anything that follows along this 183 highway here and is all up in this area, all up in here. We have the Apple campus up in this area. We have National Instruments over here. And like I said, in the domain, we have uh, Amazon, VRBO, Meta, and Indeed, just to name a few. IBM is also up here on the north side. So that's why it's referred to as the tech hub in our city. That's a wrap. North Austin and Great Hills in a nutshell, showing you around where everything is. If you want to know more or you want to see one of those homes with the great backyard views in person, give me a call, shoot me a text or send me an email. I'm always available to help you find the perfect home that matches your lifestyle. Until next time, be kind to yourself and others. I can't wait to see you.